Okay, uh, welcome everyone to the Madison City Council meeting. Today is Tuesday, February the 4th. I'd like to uh, start the agenda tonight with a uh, recital of the Lord's Prayer and Pledge of Allegiance. So please uh, remove your caps and. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Thank you, everyone. And then we have a roll call, please. Kevin Off? Present. Lucy Tillo? Here. Rampy? Here. Chatham? Here. Bartlett? Here. Dan Tillo? Here. We do have one uh, councilman who is uh, absent tonight, and Preach, for the record. Okay. Tonight's a uh, unique meeting. In addition to having a city council meeting, we'll have a public hearing. So at this time, we will recess the regular council meeting. Okay. And we'll call to order the public hearing regarding the additional appropriations. Oh, did I miss that? Sorry. Before we do that, let's uh, discuss the minutes. <coughs> council, have you had an opportunity to review the minutes? Okay. Any, uh, would you have a motion to approve the minutes? I'll move to approve the minutes. Second. Any discussion on the minutes? All in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Now we will recess the regular council meeting and move to call to order the public hearing regarding the additional appropriations. Uh, there should be a uh, sign-in sheet for everybody in attendance relative to the public hearing. <coughs> would ask that you sign one of the uh, sign-in sheets that should be circulating around the room. <coughs> I think uh, Nicole, here. Nicole have that? Yeah, I just handed you that. Okay. So as that's going around, please uh, sign that and we'll continue into the public hearing. would ask uh, Chief Staff Minnie McGee to approach the council with regards to the public hearing on the additional appropriations. Good evening, council. Uh, wanted to uh, just go over with you one more time uh, the special appropriations request, the additional request. We have met with all of you, so you've all had a chance to talk to us about it and ask any questions, but wanted to obviously do that for the public as well. Uh, so with your permission and indulgence, I'm gonna just kind of walk through what those additional requests are one more time. And then if you have any questions or the public has any questions, we can take care of that. <clears throat> so um, this would be an additional request for appropriations of monies that have not been appropriated for anything prior to this point. Uh, this is not new tax money. It is money that has already been collected from the tax levy, but not appropriated for any purpose in the 2020 budget at this point. It's been held in the cash account. So what we are requesting is, I'm, I'm gonna break it into three kind of general buckets for right now. One is to set up the Economic Development Department that Mayor Courtney uh, wanted to do for bringing in the economic development function in the house at City Hall. So those expenses would be for two new positions, a coordinator position to work out of the economic development office and an admin assistant that will also provide administrative help for uh, a couple of the other offices as we sort of expand and, and uh, make those offices bigger too. We're gonna need some more admin help. Uh, the other expenses related to setting up those offices are the, the general office expenses, travel and postage, uh, 
office furniture telephones. We're not exactly sure what those hard costs will be. So that is included in here as well as the uh, benefit portion, retirement um, insurance and HRA reserve. So um, the other section that I wanted to talk to you about that you'll be familiar with is the additional funding for our Madison Police Department officers. And that would be the additional amount of, I think it's about five and a quarter, five and a half percent um, that Mayor Courtney really pushed to get our officers up to a 10% increase for 2020. So this would be the other portion of that. And uh, that is about $81,000 of that amount. And then um, there is also longevity included in that because of the way their pay is calculated. The other increases, um, there is a new position in the Office of Planning, and that would be a new preservationist position that is part of an uh, interlocal agreement with NDOT, and that will be fully funded by NDOT uh, for two years at $40,000. And um, my position is actually a new line item. Um, while I am technically sliding into the, the role that Mr. Cook played, he is still with us and he is still working on some of our bigger, bigger projects. So we've added that salary back in. Uh, it's a new title, and that way um, we have the funding we need for both of us while we're both still here. I think that is that covers everything. Uh, there were some subscriptions and dues for memberships that uh, Mr. Worth participates in, economic development organizations, and that should cover everything. So. Any questions? Absolutely. So, if, if I'm correct, five positions. Is that correct or six? Um, it would be actually only three new positions. Three new positions. Mm -hmm. Are all those positions already, have they already been hired in? Have we already started them? No. How, do we know how quickly that, that will take place, these additional positions? I think we would start the search probably as quickly as possible after this. Uh, part of the other timing issue is setting up that department physically. Uh, that construction is going on right now. So as soon as that is ready and we can get furniture in, we would look to hire. I would just add, Councilman, we are drafting a job description. <laughs> and so once we get approval for the appropriations, then we'll finalize job descriptions and start the, rec the recruitment uh, process. Uh, but it all first started with making sure we had approval over the uh, appropriation. Any other questions, Council? <coughs> Are there any comments or questions from uh, anybody in the audience who would like to address uh, Council or the Mayor? Thank you, Mindy. So we can go to that. Okay. Uh, hopefully, everyone has had an opportunity to sign the uh, sign-in sheet uh, for the attendance and the public hearing. And now, I would adjourn the public hearing regarding the additional appropriations. And we will um, come back into order the uh, regular council meeting. <coughs> First on the agenda for the re resumption of our council meeting will be a uh, proclamation for Black History Month. Uh, Nathan, we'd like to ask you to address council, please. Good evening, council. I'm Nathan Montoya, uh, 110 East Main Street. I chair the Human Relations Commission. Uh, and I would like to ask uh, the members of the commission to join me uh, up here. Um, Vice Chair Sue Leiters. We also have Al Alonzo. Tony Schroeder. Am I missing anybody present? Um, not with us tonight are um, Bill Jackson, uh, who's treasurer. He's uh, pastor of First Christian Church. Shirley Clefford, Casa Amiga. Um, Katie Hadley, Hanover uh, College faculty, 
um, Jessica McAllister, uh, Madison Jefferson County Public Library, and Susan Jackson, Madison Police Department. So, uh, I don't know if uh, Sue or any of the other board members had anything to say, but I have to move well, to the park. Sue might want to have something to say. To the city council, uh, mayor, and all the members in the audience, I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you for recognizing uh, this diverse month. We have a program coming up at Broadway Baptist Church on uh, February the 16th at 3 o'clock. It will be uh, a program that celebrates not only black history, but diverse history. And I hope that you'll take the time to come out and um, see what we're doing on that day. I also would like to uh, take this time to recognize um, a member of the black community that passed away just recently, Neil Lewis. I'm sure some of you are familiar with him. He uh, died Thursday night in New Albany, Indiana. He had a beautiful voice and a beautiful pianist and uh, his services will become, be this um, Saturday at 12 noon at Trinity Church. Thank you. So we'd like to read this proclamation. Whereas Black History Month was adopted in 1978 to honor and affirm the importance of black history in American history. And whereas the history of people of African heritage includes thousands of years of some of the greatest, most advanced and innovative societies in the history of human existence. And whereas Black History Month is a time for citizens of our city, our state, and our country to reflect on the rich history and teachings of African Americans and honor their progress and achievements made throughout the world. And whereas Madison was a hub to the Underground Railroad movement due to its location on the Ohio River, and whereas the people of Madison were some of the first to become sympathetic to, aid, and encourage the Underground Railroad movement and the emancipation of slaves in the quest to afford equality to all under the United States Constitution. And whereas citizens such as John Carter, Patsy and Chapman Harris, Elijah and William Anderson, John Carr, uh, um, Willis Riker, George E. Baptiste, and numerous others were prominent in the Underground Railroad movement. And whereas Madison was home to Broadway School, the first commissioned colored school in Indiana, and our county is home to Eleutherian College, the first college in Indiana that allowed people of color to attend. And whereas many other churches and organizations in the African American community, such as Broadway Baptist Church, St. Stephen AME Church, and Eureka Lodge have had a positive impact on our community. And whereas the Georgetown settlement on the east end of Madison was a prominent example of a self-supporting free black community in the 1800s, and whereas the black community has contributed much to the education, economic development, and culture of Madison for hundreds of years, and whereas the city continues to appreciate and honor the contributions of members of the black community in various ways, including uh, the naming of Hughes Way in 2012, and in honor of the contribution in ath athletics of the Humes family, both Larry and Willie Humes have been inducted into the Bas Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame. Now, therefore, I, Bob Courtney, Mayor of the City of Madison, Indiana, do hereby proclaim the month of February 2020 to be Black History Month in Madison, and I encourage all Madison residents to join me in celebrating and reflecting on the creativity, cultures, traditions, and importance of African Americans in our history. In witness whereof, I have here and to set my hand and caused the seal of the City of Madison to be affixed this fourth day of February 2020. Moving on now to uh, our resolutions. And I'll turn it over to council. Okay. The first resolution is resolution number 2020-4, a resolution of the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana, appropriating additional funds for the annual or for the 2020 annual budget. Whereas it has been determined that it is now necessary to appropriate more money than was originally appropriated in the 2020 annual budget. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana, that for the expenses 
of the taxing unit the following additional sums of money are hereby appropriated out of the funds named and for the purposes specified per the following major budget classifications as detailed in attachment A, subject to the laws governing the same. And as you can see, the funds are listed there below. Uh, and uh, the sponsor of that is Curtis Chet. So if we could entertain a motion to approve. I would move that we approve resolution 2020-4 as presented. I'll second. All in favor? I guess we'll do a roll call. Yes. Lucy Gentillo? Yes. Ramsey? Yes. Chatham? Yes. Bartlett? Yes. Gentillo? Yes. And I'm going to go slightly out of order because we've also, I'm going to go ahead and read the, well, let's go ahead and do the other resolution now. God, no. And that is resolution number 2020 5, is that right? Well. Okay. Resolution 2020-12, resolution of the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana, approving deductions from assessed value of new real property improvements in an already declared economic revitalization area. <clears throat> this is with regard to the Cotton Mill LLC. Whereas the Indiana General, General Assembly has enacted the statute, Indiana Code 6-1.1-12.1, as amended, which is called the Act, authorizing certain deductions from the assessed value of new real property improvements for the purposes of taxation of such new real property improvements in the area that has already been declared an economic revitalization area and whereas the cotton mill llc will undertake real property improvements at its site located at 108 st michael's and 600 601 and 616 East Vaughn Drive in Madison, Indiana, between the dates of February 1st, 2020 and March 31st, 2021, as set forth in the Statement of Benefits submitted to the Common Council by the company. And whereas previously adopted resolutions, <coughs> which is resolution number 51 2019 and 54-2019 adopted. Um, and copies of which are attached here as Exhibit 2, the Madison Common Council declared and affirmed that the area described in the resolutions, which this includes the site, is an economic revitalization area. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Madison Common Council as follows. The Madison Common Council finds and determines that the new real property improvements proposed to be constructed <coughs> by the company at the site in the area shall be allowed deductions for 10 years from the assessed value of such new real property improvements as set forth in section three below in accordance with the provisions of the act. Based upon the information in the statement of benefits describing the projects, the Madison Common Council makes the following findings. A, that the estimate of cost of the new real property improvements is reasonable for real property improvements of that nature. B, the estimate of the number of individuals who will be employed or whose employment will be retained as a result of the proposed new real property improvements can be reasonably expected to result from the proposed new real property improvements. C, that the estimate of annual salaries of those individuals who will be employed or whose employment will be retained as a re can reasonably be expected to result from the proposed new real property improvements. D, that the benefits described in the statement of benefits can reasonably be expected to result from the proposed new real property improvements. E, that the totality of benefits from the new real property improvements is sufficient to justify a 10-year property tax deduction. Based upon the information and statement of benefits and the foregoing findings, the Madison Common Council, pursuant to the Act, hereby approves and allows the company tax deductions for 10 years for the proposed new real property improvement areas. The percentage of deductions of each said 10 years shall be as follows. And you can see that below it incrementally goes down over the 10 years. The Jefferson County Auditor shall take such further actions as may be required to carry out the purposes of this resolution and ensure the eligibility of the new real property improvements for the deductions here, here above described. This resolution shall be in full force and effect from an after passage by the Madison Common Council. And 
this being a resolution, we'll need a motion to approve and a second, and then you can have discussion. And it's sponsored by Dan Dutillo. And you could also, before that, maybe invite uh, Matt to introduce the developer of the cotton mill. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Council. Good evening, everyone in attendance. Um, my pleasure tonight to have, <coughs> excuse me, have with me um, one of the principal owners of the cotton mill property, Mr. Ron Bateman. And uh, it was Ron's um, vision and uh, dream and a little bit of risk uh, a couple of years ago when he looked down at our building down there and said, this really could be something. And, and he had the, the forethought and, the, and the, the, the partners with him to really get this kicked off, the cotton mill kicked off, and the um, city um, saw fit to help uh, along the way. And uh, I'm happy to say that, that we are very close. Um, construction's actually started. I'm going to let Ron touch on kind of the progress for you um, on where we stand with the cotton mill. But um, as everyone knows, this has been a game changer for our city and will continue to be. So. Um, with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to Ron Bateman just for a quick update, and then we'll be glad to answer any questions you guys have. First of all, thanks to the city for your support in this project. It's it's big, and uh, we know we we're aware of it, and we're thankful for your help. Uh, the status of the project is that some months ago we signed a, an agreement with Marriott, and uh, that franchise we own that franchise now. Uh, the property is free and clear. Um, we, uh, this is a really complicated financial deal. I think there are something like seven different groups that have a financial interest in this project. Each of them has uh, seven lawyers, and each one of those is smarter than the one before. So we've been on the phone every Tuesday for about six months uh, in conference calls grinding through 127 items on the due diligence list. Uh, the closing date, uh, the financing is all arranged. Uh, the documents are in uh, what they call typing. Uh, loan docs are ready and being reviewed right now. And the closing date, which is the date that the tax credit partners uh, agree uh, to to fund this, and we have, you know, we have we have construction financing, which is coming from Bank in Alaska. We have long-term financing, which is coming from Bank in Alaska. And then we have the tax credit financing for the various groups that are participating. So we have this big closing event, uh, which is on the 24th of February, that will, uh, that will cut us loose to get going in a big way. But what we've done in the meantime is trying to take advantage of as much, get as much work as we could get done without a building permit which was to demo and clean up, uh, and then actually we have a building permit now uh, through the state and the city, uh, but we're not using it yet. Uh, we're waiting on, uh, I think I'm instructed not to do any construction until after you guys decide about this. So we're not doing anything. We are impatient as I'll get out. It's like you have one foot next to the floor and you're going around and around in circles doing what you can uh, at arm's length. But uh, uh, we've been, uh, we've demoed the warehouse, we've secured the building for, for weather. Uh, we're inside cleaning out. I think we've taken uh, probably, uh, well, I think maybe five or six huge dumpster loads out. Uh, and uh, so the inside is clean. We're in the process of demoing what we can demo on the back side while we wait for park service approvals. But uh, we're ready to rock and roll, so uh, uh, I, I think you'll see big changes soon. Council, I, I might just add that um, the approval of this abatement was a, was a commitment that prior council had made to contribute its match for the dyno credit. So this isn't a new request. This, this is, uh, we're following the process in order to bring it before you tonight to honor our prior commitment. I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution 2020-12. I'll second that. Any discussion? So I just want to say I'm really excited to, to be able to sponsor this and to have been along for the ride for a little while. And um, 
you know, I, I got to sit down and, and hear some of how this all came together. And whatever your favorite action movie is you've ever seen, there's more twists and turns in how this came about than any movie you'll ever see. And it's actually miraculous that we're here. So I'm really proud to sponsor this, and I can't wait for this project to really get going. Uh, any other council remarks? Just if I could thank you for your vision. We greatly appreciate that. Any Anyone else? Any comments uh, from the uh, audience? They'd like to address the board. Okay, we'll have a roll call on the uh, motion, please. Seven Lucy Ditillo? Yes. 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 And the last thing on uh, under resolutions and bills is amended ordinance number 2019-7. And this piggybacks off of what uh, Ms. McGee discussed. And it's amendment to city ordinance 2019-7 that fixed salaries of appointed officers and employees of the city of Madison, Indiana for the year 2020. Whereas the Common Council on September 17, 2019 adopted an ordinance 2019-7, an ordinance fixing salaries of officers and employees of the City of Madison, Indiana for the year 2020. Whereas since the adoption of Ordinance 2019-7, certain circumstances have occurred that now require certain changes and additions to the aforementioned ordinance. And whereas the Common Council, after considerable consideration, now desires to amend Ordinance 2019-7 to create compensation for new positions within the city and increase the pay of police officers, including police chief and deputy chief. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana, that form the City of Madison Ordinance 2019-7 be amended as follows. The new position of Chief of Staff be compensated at the annual minimum rate of 31200 and the annual maximum rate of 51896 that the new position of Economic Development Outreach Coordinator be compensated at the minimum rate of 39000 and at an annual rate of 45000 and the new position of Economic Development Development Administrative Assistant be compensated at the annual minimum rate of $25,272 and the annual maximum rate of $35,000. And the new position of preservations be compensated at an annual minimum rate of $28,000 and an annual maximum rate of $40,000. And the new position of Airport Assistant Manager be compensated at the annual minimum rate of $20,000 and an annual maximum rate of $32,000. All police officers, to include the police chief and deputy chief, are to receive an annual compensation of $2,600 to be paid at the rate of $200 per bi-weekly pay period beginning on the 14th payroll day of July 3rd, 2020 and through the 26th payroll of or 13 pay periods at $200 additional compensation per pay period. The, these new rates will be effective upon adoption of this amendment to the ordinance 2019-7 and shall be treated as if their rates were in effect on January 1, 2020 and will be retroactive back to January 1, 2020 except for the police officer additional compensation which will be paid according to the above schedule. Attached is a revised 2020 annual employee pay schedule and longevity pay schedules as part of this ordinance. That's sponsored by Curtis Chatter. So I'm going to go on the second reading. Okay. That is just the first reading. I'll go on the second reading. We'll discuss that at the next council meeting. Okay. Council, uh, what's next is a continuation of work that we've been doing the last uh, three months in looking at board appointments. And, and committee appointments. I think what you have in front of you is the uh, current roster of appointments. And there are four positions that are highlighted that would require uh, a mayor's appointment with council consent or council's appointment. If you, what I'll do is I'll read those and then if you want we can um, approve all four of those at the same time or it, you can make a motion to exclude any of them. Port Authority appointed uh, Jesse Brewer to mayor appointment with council consent. 
for a term of four years beginning uh, after the appointment and continuing through December 31st of uh, 2023. We have one recommended appointment for Police Merit Board would be Katie Rampey representing City Council. Four year appointment continuing through December 31st, 2023. We have one appointment to make tonight to the Jefferson County Board of Tourism. It would be Kathy Petkovic uh, representing the innkeepers uh, industry as a city council appointment for two years, uh, ending on December 31st, 2021. And then finally, there would be uh, appointment to fill a vacancy on the PACE Review Board. That uh, would be Councilman Jim Bartlett, a council appointment, three-year appointment, and uh, continuing the uh, unexpired uh, term of the uh, Bung Group, and that term would go through December 31st, 2021. There are still other board appointments that we're continuing to work on, as well as appointments to boards uh, where the city is represented on county boards. So this is an ongoing process until we get all of the positions um, filled. And uh, now I take a motion to approve the four recommended appointments to these boards. I move that we approve the appointments as presented. I'll second. Council, any discussion on the motion for you? Is there anyone from the audience who has any comment on these appointments? Okay. We'll do a... Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Was that an opposition or was that a? Opposed, yes. Okay, okay. Do we know it? Now we'll move to the report of city officials. First off, Brian Martin, our Head of Building and Design. Hello, everyone. So, the past month, I've made approximately 25 inspections on projects ranging from new commercial and residential to commercial and residential remodels. Uh, some of the more prominent projects include River Tower Loss, which is currently in the mechanical roughing stage, uh, Autumn Trace Senior Living Facility, also in the, uh, in the uh, mechanical roughing stage. Madison High School addition, still doing some structural work as well as mechanical roughings. Uh, Friendship State Bank is actually nearing completion. And then uh, so three new shopping uh, style homes down on uh, the West Main Street uh, moving along very well. In fact, the, the metal structure I think is uh, they're installing drywall as we speak, so for next, next working day. <laughs> uh, so being new to this position, I've been trying to reach out as often as I can, introduce myself to as many contractors on current jobs. Uh, my hope is to build a good rapport with these contractors moving forward. Uh, I continue to thank everyone for their investment in the community and remind them that I'm in place to help them succeed with the project. I want them to understand the need for permits is an important part of the process. I emphasize that the permitting and code enforcement is in place for public safety concerns first and foremost. Um, so in the office, we've followed up on a number of nuisance calls. Uh, some of these cases uh, turn into the city hiring a contractor to go out and clean up the property, and some have also turned into success stories where the homeowners are doing the cleanup themselves. Either way, I believe this is a good procedure to promote a clean city, but also a friendly reminder of the time and effort that goes into following up on these calls. Uh, also in the past month, we've followed up on calls concerning five unsafe structures. Uh, some of these buildings that understandably need to be demolished and uh, they may not have historic, historic merit, but they still need to go through the proper channels. For example, uh, going in front of the historic board when they're in the historic district. Uh, likewise, some of these structures would fall into the category of being in disrepair. And with that thought in mind, we're trying to assess the situation of troubled buildings throughout the city uh, by beginning a survey of structures that fit into this category. Uh, our hope is that we can bring attention to these structures in such a way that could attract a possible investor to invest in and save these spaces before they're too far gone. We understand that not every one of these can be saved, but we're looking for as many positive outcomes as possible. 
Uh, my office is also working on procedures to make the process of obtaining the building permit as painless as we can. Uh, we're looking for ways to con continually remind the public of why and when they need a building permit. Uh, we want to try to break down some of those barriers that exist between the public and the building inspector. Uh, we're also currently looking at other cities and their respective websites for inspiration on, on how to revamp our system uh, in order to educate the public on these processes and procedures. And lastly, I've been to two continuing education courses in the past month. The first was an overview of the 2018 International Residential Code that we are currently working under. And the second was a training course put on uh, by the DNR about uh, building and considerations in the flood zone. And um, I also have a three-day training course scheduled for the end of uh, February uh, to learn more about the current electrical building code. So, that's all I have. Council, any questions for uh, Brian? Yeah, Brian, thank you. Thanks. Nicole Schell, Director of our uh, City Planning and Preservation Department. Good evening, Council. You should have a report um, in your packet. I'm just going to go over the brief summary. Um, on January 27th, the historic board met and reviewed five applications, all of which were approved. The office in January reviewed two fast track applications, both for fences, and those were also approved. Um, Pace meets on February 10th and 11th to review nine applications. So in your next packet, you'll have um, some of four pictures uh, on those projects. On Stellar, we had our state quarterly meeting earlier today, and that report was sent out to you via email because it was quite lengthy and I wanted to give you time to review it. Um, so if you have any questions over that, let me know. Um, the Stellar um, executive team and advisory teams will meet next week to review that report also. We had a good um, teleconference on Crystal Beach um, with the state preservation office and local historic preservation offices um, on Monday and that project continues to move forward. We're planning another open house uh, for all other projects, um, including Crystal Beach and a public hearing specifically on Crystal Beach in order to apply for the grant funds. So anticipate seeing another resolution to apply for grant funds from Seller. And then um, with that, um, the City uh, Redevelopment Commission awarded the bid for the offsite improvements on Tower Tech to the low bidder of Sedan Contracting at their meeting today. And then since the report, um, you've heard a little bit about Cotton Mill, um, so you'll see the construction on that starting um, in the next couple of months, um, at least visually, they've already been working a little bit on the inside. And then our owner-occupied rehab project is almost complete. We have six out of the nine fully complete and two that are just waiting um, to be painted. And that's all I have. Thank you. Any questions for Nicole? Thank you, Nicole. <clears throat> Brian Jackson, uh, Superintendent of Utilities. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I just want to go over a few things here. Uh, recently, dealing with our water, uh, the IBM Office of Water Quality came down and uh, inspected our system. Uh, they went through uh, several needed improvements and maintenance requirements for our wells, our pumps, and our storage structures. Um, after that, we're, I've set up a meeting with our engineer at Commonwealth, and we're going to assess our current infrastructure also and develop a long-term plan to meet the current and future needs of the city water system. Um, we're gonna to try to incorporate the IDEM recommendations with our new long-term plan. Uh, there's some things we should be doing that we're not doing, uh, but the overall, the, uh, the uh, inspection went really well. She met with us for a couple hours after she inspected everything and then sent us a 32-page report on what we needed to do to, to, to fix everything. In our sewer system, uh, I mentioned to the Board of Public Works yesterday that uh, beginning February 10th, we're going to be doing some reparation and lining of some of our underground sewer lines in a few areas. Uh, in Sunrise, we're going to be repairing four lines. Uh, on 8th Street, going into the junior high school, we're going to be repairing one very long line. And on Saddle Tree Lane, we're going to be repairing a line. This isn't going to involve any digging. Uh, we're going to be doing cast our cured in place pipe which is much more cost efficient when you have to dig up roads. Um, 
And then uh, lastly, with our, our staffing, we have currently uh, my wastewater superintendent, Jay Thompson. He's performing dual roles as our wastewater superintendent and as my MS4 coordinator. And our MS4 program has to deal with stormwater. I know some of you are newer and may not be privy to what that is. Uh, we're beginning the process of training one of our new employees, uh, Justin Fleetwood, to take over the role of MS4 coordinator. Justin currently works in the treatment plant in the lab and he has a class two water, wastewater license and he'll begin to come certified in stormwater and take over hopefully and alleviate, alleviate some of Jay's burden and it's doing two roles. Other than that, that's all I have, Council. Brent. <laughs> yes, Dan. Um, will there be any of these neighborhoods that will lose water pressure or, or water? These are sewer repairs. These are all sewer. These are all sewer repairs. Thank and you. it's, if, yeah, they go into the sewer lines underground. I mean, there, there'll be, we have to do some repairs, but they'll all be underground. We shouldn't disrupt the roads anywhere. That's, that's the reason we're doing it. If it's out in the grassy areas, we can dig them and it's much more cost efficient. But when we, if, like the one along 8th Street, it's all the way almost to junior high school. If we had to dig up that and it's 14 feet deep, that would be very cost prohibitive. Thank you. Hey, Brian. Yes, sir. Ah. Uh, you, you regularly attend the meetings on the new bridge approach. Yes. It's, I wonder yes. if maybe you give council as well as the community an update on that because I, I know that um, yeah, communication is important, so please. On, on every other Monday, I attend, a, a, it's more of a construction invoice NDOT meeting to go over uh, issues that NDOT's having with Beatty and, and us. And then um, I actually spoke with Beatty Construction today, and I'm glad you brought that up. And I, I mentioned to him, I thought it would be a good idea to send out, have Tammy send out an email and see if anyone's interested, you guys or the public would be interested in him setting up a meeting, a public meeting, uh, to address what their, what their plans are now and what's going on in the future. But he, he, we did that, I think, a couple months ago, and we didn't have a big response, so we didn't. He didn't do one. But he, I spoke to him today, and he said, if we can set it up, he's more than happy to give us an overview of what's going on down there. But, but there are several phases, and they've had to jump around depending upon some of the things that have happened down there. But that's just construction. Okay. Question, Dan? No. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I think that would be beneficial. I, I mean, I know enough to just be uh, yeah, and it's, it's open. What's going on there? It'll be open to the public. Now we, we've had one once towards the beginning, and we didn't get a really great turnout. Uh, but it, it, it would be nice if more people come because there's questions that you know we can't think of that other people need, right. need to address, and he, he'll try to answer anyone he can. I agree, and I think it's important to have good communication, particularly for the residents who live on the east end of town now who are. You know, right, they're directly affected by the construction. Yeah, they're basically in the construction zone. Right. Everyone along Main Street there is, is and, they're, and they're getting ready to do some major work. They're gonna rip up the entire Main Street, the sidewalks, the curbs, everything. They've gotta redo storm sewer water lines and uh, they've already moved to a sewer main, but uh, yeah, it, it's gonna be greatly affected at that end. We have probably another six months or so of construction before they get you know substantially complete i think in late summer early fall so i think it now would be a good time to have a meeting yeah. so we'll coordinate that and hopefully have yeah i'll get with tammy and have her I, what i'll probably have her do is send an email out to all of you and include uh kyle Beatty of Beatty construction and try to get the toughest thing is when most people work and it's tough to find a date and a time for everybody to, to attend Brian, any uh, news on the long-term control agreement? Uh, do you want to make an announcement there? Anything? For the sewer? Yep. No. Okay. We're, we're still waiting on them to release it. There's there's more or less a nine to twelve month period where IDEM will assess us, and if they if they deem that our new system is doing what we purported it to do, then we should get a release of our judicial agreement. Okay. Any questions for Brian? Doing a good job. Thank you. One. Okay. Thank you. All right, Dave Stucker, Parks Department. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Council. Uh, just a few reminders uh, for the community. Uh, Crystal Beach season passes. We have a special going on promoted by the Park Board. So, forty dollar pass if you purchase it from January second through March thirty first. Um, Fifty dollar pass if purchased April 1st through May 22nd 
and then $60 if purchased after May 23rd. So I encourage everyone in the community to uh, think about that, maybe plan ahead if possible. Uh, next item of business within the parks, we are amidst uh, baseball and softball registrations. Um, those should be out uh, one day next week. We'll give those to Scott and typically he delivers those out to all of the schools. Uh, Pope John, they do I believe an email blast to all of the kids. So this year, rookie, minor, and major league. Again, baseball and softball, the deadline is March 27th. Our upper division, some of the older kids, the deadline is May 8th. And again, these forms should be available uh, next week in the community. And we are finishing up our basketball season. And scheduled right now is Monday the 17th. Games will be played at the high school at Psalm Gym. And that's Monday the 17th. And that will conclude our basketball program for the year. Okay? All right. Thank you. Questions for Dave? Good. Well, when can we get to applications being available online and people to register online? We have, we have discussed that. Um, I think Hannah is uh, aware of our current situation. She may have a solution for us. Um, we can do a little bit of that right now if someone is willing to give a credit card over the phone, but it's a little bit of an extra expense. So we would try to minimize that or, or do away with that. So um, there's a lot that we could try to do and implement over line, golf course, campground, all kinds of different things. So we need to move forward in that direction, yes. Uh, we've kind of been doing a whole uh, evaluation of, of our communication to the public, particularly on social media and our website platform. Um, so Hannah has been working with all the department heads on how to communicate, but also working with and evaluating another uh, or more development in our website to make it more uh, effective, such as collecting payments as well as applications. So it is on our, it is on our list of counseling. Great. Yep. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dave. And uh, Streets Department, uh, Mike Peake? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, was there another comment or question? Oh, no. Okay. Evening Council, Mayor. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, we've been, uh, we've been updating signs and other uh, uh, things for the transfer station, the city garage, water department for better information for deliveries, times, hours, and directions to them. Um, also, we have been working on the uh, park benches that go on the east end of the extension of the sidewalk with dedication plaques on them and ready to be installed as soon as weather's permitting. Also, this time of year, we try to do a lot of tree trimming and taking down uh, dead trees, shrubs, and things like that around the golf course and throughout the town, hilltop, and downtown. Um, we've been catching up on a few other maintenance things while we had time, such as uh, our city hall buildings. Um, We've been down here, as Chief of Staff, Ms. McGee, pointed out, the uh, economic development uh, manager, uh, Matt Worth. We've been painting the office, put down some carpet, trim, and we've been doing this all in-house to cut down cost, and, uh, which is a big plus. Um, also, just a small update on our salt. We have 550 tons in our salt barn with 280 in reserve to get when needed and 2,000 gallons of brine for the smaller snow events. So hopefully we don't have to use any of that, but we have it on stock in case we need it. Other than that, that's all I have. I hope we don't need it, uh, any of the brine or salt, but you never know. In the years past, when I come up here, it's usually a flood or a snowstorm or something. So this is good news today. Council, any comments or questions for Mike? We're doing a very good job in our build out over here. If you haven't had a chance to take a look at it, thank you, Mike. You're welcome. 
Um, Matt Worth, Economic Development. Good evening once again, Council. A um, couple of things to say first. First and foremost, I really uh, appreciate the Council making that appropriation earlier tonight to, uh, to further the Economic Development Department's efforts um, towards towards work here in the City of Madison. Um, it's been a it's been a great experience so far here in the first month, and and uh, between uh, Mayor Courtney and Chief of Staff McGee and uh, several other department heads and, and things we've got going on. Uh, there's a lot of positive momentum in this city right now, and I'm just glad to be a part of it and this this additional appropriation and allowing us to, to continue to work the mayor has the vision for will really uh, enhance our city moving forward. So thank you for that. I also need to take a moment um, because the people in the office uh, complain a little bit about my uh, noise factor on working on my new office. Mike, Mike's been very modest um, in his remarks. They've done a phenomenal job on remodeling um, that whole back part of the office. And I know several of you saw that beforehand, but if you haven't seen it, um, <coughs> please come back and see it. It's, it's amazing the talent we have here with the street department guys. They're doing a great job on remodeling our building and saving us some money. So I believe my uh, report is in your packets. Um, I don't want to run over the same things twice, but, but some of the major factors we've been working on, um, a downtown grocery store uh, continues to be a priority of ours, and um, not only a traditional grocery store, but we're also looking outside the box um, and some other ideas that, that may fit fit a little better. We're not sure yet, but um, we are continuing to work on that, and uh, I know that is still a, a concern of our residents. So working on that, continue to work with a uh, development team on the uh, old Madison Plaza. Um, that's, that's, I think, moving in the right direction. Um, so that, that's some good news. And then I continue to represent our city at several regional things on a monthly basis, including the Regional Development Authority. That's our five county um, uh, regional development authority that Jefferson County is a part of. Um, because regionalism is is really important these days. The state recognizes it and the state is, is watching the five county group that we're a part of very closely. Um, and there's some positive things I think will come out of that for Madison and Jefferson County at some point in the future. So continue to stay on top of that as well as the other uh, group I'm part of is the South Central Regional Economic Development Organization. And uh, that's a 10 county group that is uh, consistently working to recruit or bring in new business and industry to the region. And then once they're in the region, my job is to get them to Jefferson County and Mass. So um, continue to stay active with that. Um, other things, continue, we, uh, we just attended a state training the Indiana Economic Development Corporation put on for new mayors. I thought that was a very successful day for Mayor Courtney, um, Chief of Staff McGee and myself. Um, got to meet state officials, learn about what they look for in projects and how they how they disseminate leads and things of that nature. I thought it was a, a half a day well spent. So um, Cotton Mill Project, it's been a long process as you know, but um, continue to stay plugged in with that to move that along with the mayor and others, Nicole and some other staff. So um, I don't want to take too much time of your time, but I'll be glad to answer any and all questions you have um, at this point if, if you have any. So. One of the things I'd like to ask you, Council, um, let me know what you'd like to see in my reports from time to time. Um, email me, reach out to me. Um, I think I know most of you and I see you on a regular basis in some form or fashion, so i um, be glad to, to kind of provide some information that you'd want to see. Matt, I don't know if this would be you or, or another department, but it would be neat for us to see the projects that are going right now and maybe estimated completion dates like just to kind of see how things are, are rolling along. I don't know if that would be... That's probably a combination of myself and yeah, maybe a couple other folks we can put something together. Certainly the yeah. goal is uh, spearheading all the stellar projects okay. so yeah. that we do have that report yep. available. Sure. I just thought it would be good for everybody to see kind of where we are on different projects. Thank you. Sure. Okay, thank you, Council. Thank you. Uh, Madison Police Department Chief Ben McKay. Hello, Council. Just updates on a couple of projects we're working on. Uh, the mobile CAD report writing system in the car is moving along. MPD is ahead of schedule. 
as far as uh, the departments go with the um, setup of it. We're waiting, hopefully at the end of this week, the beginning of next week, our um, mobile data units will be in the, the Wi-Fi packs for each car. We'll be installing those hopefully next week. Uh, our second traffic enforcement trailer is complete, thanks to the city garage for doing a wonderful job on manufacturing the trailer uh, for us um, and hooking up some of the um, accessories and, and drilling holes for security. We're waiting for anti-theft hardware for this trailer, believe it or not. Uh, we've had a lot of people move our first one, um, try and haul it off. We found the trailer hitch at the base of one of the, at the trailer down on Jefferson Street. So I don't know if somebody's trying to steal it, but uh, we got a pretty good sized cable to put to the wheels. They'd have to drag it away. So um, it'll be sitting out here on West Street for probably the rest of this week. I'm learning basically how to use it. Uh, it the instructions are not the greatest, so um, if you see it, please don't try and make the lights flash on it. Um, staffing updates. Uh, the two officers at the academy are in week four. They're still excited. It's still new to them. When they get a little bit more into it and the food gets grosser, basically, uh, they'll be calling and saying, is this almost over yet? So they'll start their uh, hands-on skills First breakout week next week, uh, firearms for one of them and emergency vehicle operations for the other. It's, it's a, I hate to say, but it's a good time to drive. Uh, you get, it's a closed course and, and it's kind of a mile and a half course. You get to do a little chasing of other people and stuff. So um, they uh, come and asked us if they can have some of the equipment. So they're moving forward. The two officers that are in uh, field training, they're in week six. They're getting ready to start phase four, which they'll move into uh, their training officer will go to plain clothing. And uh, basically the, what we found when the, the field officer is in the passenger seat, and you have two uniformed officers in the car, the passenger is the first one to get out. So the public always wants to talk to the first person out of the car. <coughs> so putting the, un the ununiformed officer in the car, with them watching, that gives the, uh, the new guy the chance to be the primary on everything and, and answer all the questions. So, um, as everybody is probably aware, the Police Merit Board voted to release uh, Jonathan Simpson from employment <coughs> the department, uh, which gives us an opening. So we hope to have a hiring process uh, within the next couple of weeks. It also allows uh, an open detective spot within the department. We will uh, probably wait to post for that position until um, all our guys are out of field training and our shifts are back up to full power. And lastly, um, we will also begin interviews for our canine, our new canine handler. Uh, the garage worked long and hard to get our uh, third canine vehicle up and running. We had to install a cage in it and uh, the cage was said to be built for the year of our car, but it wasn't, so some modifications had to be done. So it's installed and ready to go. And uh, we hope to have him on the, on the well with the dog within the next week or so. so. Any questions for me? Oh, sad, uh, Chief. I know we're also focusing on community safety, and part, an element of that has been uh, looking at areas across our community where we need to uh, improve illumination. So we might have noticed, particularly downtown, in some dark spots, we've added three new street lights to help uh, visibility and illumination in, in areas that have been dark. And, and uh, I think that's also going to improve neighborhoods and they've been around parks and uh, also protect you know, children as they're out in the evenings. And I yes. want to thank you too, Chief, for uh, some of the foot patrols that we're seeing the officers uh, partake in and getting out of the cars and reaching out to the community. I think uh, it's been noticed and appreciated. Yes, fortunately with the, a little warmer weather, they're, they're getting out of the car. So. Okay. And uh, hopefully it stays dry. Yeah. Any questions for uh, Chief? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Madison Fire Department <coughs> Chief uh, DeVries is not here, but uh, I know Kenny Washer, is, I think he's in the audience, so we'll invite him up. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Captain. The Fire Department had a busy month of January. Um, we had a total of 56 calls, 24 of those calls were uh, fire-related incidents and 32 medical-related incidents. We, in addition to answering those calls, we had uh, training. I um, know many of you remember the awards that we've done for our Firefighter One class that we had up here. Shortly after that class graduated, we started the Hazmat Awareness and Operations class. We have graduated 12 additional members 
uh, as hazmat operations technicians uh, as of last week. Uh, so that's in addition to that uh, Firefighter 1 class. We're going to switch gears a little bit in the training. Uh, the month of February and March will be geared towards uh, emergency vehicle response, driving safely on the roadways, and also an operation of those vehicles, whether it be an engine or a, an aerial device. Um, we are going to emphasize a new training. Uh, we would like to get more drivers, but we also want to uh, enhance the training of the drivers we already have. Uh, Hannah is working on the city website, as we've already talked about this evening. Um, it is uh, accessible through the main page. You can now, the people can now go to that website and request the smoke detector installation uh, through that website. And we have, believe it or not, already got a couple requests on there. So that program is up and it is going great. Uh, we have, I don't have a total number that we've installed, but uh, uh, Battalion 1, uh, Travis Conover is doing an outstanding job and we have installed many smoke detectors. And that's a free program. It is office. totally free. It does not cost them a dime. Yeah, uh, grateful for our sponsors and donors for uh, providing the funding for that. Yeah, we, we go and evaluate, uh, we determine how many it, it needs and we, we install them. It doesn't cost them anything. They're, they're out absolutely nothing. <coughs> and the, the detectors we do install have a 10 year uh, battery in those. Uh, the batteries do not have to be replaced for 10 years. <coughs> the fire department has formed a recruitment and retention committee. Um, which has had their initial meeting. They will be meeting again this month. Uh, after that, they are going to make a presentation to you all with their ideas of what they've come up with for recruitment and retention to the Madison Fire Department. And last but not least, our Station 6, Clifty, uh, up on Clifty Drive, is having a chilly supper uh, Saturday, February the 8th. Uh, from 11 to 2, and they would uh, like for everyone uh, that can uh, come up and get a bowl of jelly and fellowship with them a little bit. Thank you. Any questions for Kenny? So as you can see, I mean, a common theme here is what can we do for a community's public safety? We're investing more in Mass and Police Department. We are investing in Mass and Fire Department. We have a, a very proud tradition of an all-volunteer fire department. However, recruitment and retention is really important both for the police department and the fire department. So we appreciate uh, everybody's support there and uh, certainly appreciate the leadership both at Mass and the police department and the fire department in uh, bringing some of these key initiatives uh, to fruition. Any questions for Kim Washington? Thank, Thank you, sir. We don't have any bills on third reading, but we do have one bill on second reading. I think, Lacey, are you going to read that? I'll read it. Okay, and then I think the, uh, the actual uh, requesters of that are here. If you'd like to come up, uh, Kenny and Paula Honeycutt. Okay. Nope, and Melissa? We're good. Okay. So we are on second reading, so there will be an opportunity both for council and public comment, but we'll start first by reading the uh, ordinance. Welcome. Yeah, that's fine. An ordinance of the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana, amending the zoning map of the City of Madison, Indiana. And I'll just add to that that this is a uh, modification where the zoning of the property be changed from historic district residential back to what it was originally, which is heavy industry, and the property address is 110 Craigmont Street in downtown Madison. We'll open it up to uh, comments or questions from, from council on this second read. There is any. Not hearing any. Uh, any comments or questions from the audience with regard to this? Hearing none. Uh, not hearing a motion to suspend rules, but we'll go to third reading and that'll be on the uh, next city council meeting. So thank you for unless you had something you want to add. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, is there anyone here in the public who would like to address council or the mayor at the podium? Yes, uh, please uh, come up. 
Well, I didn't I'm Gray Black. Uh, I'm here representing the county council, and uh, we'll be trying to attend uh, at least one city council meeting each month. So, if you have anything that you need to get with me about, please do so. Thank Councilman you. Black, I did not see you back there. I would have said hello and recognized you earlier. Thank you for being here. Our relationship with Jefferson County Commissioners and County Council are important to us. There's lots of things that we're working uh, on in collaboration. So, are, is anyone else from the public who would like to address? Uh, yes, Aaron. I don't normally get from behind the camera, so uh, bear with me. <laughs> Uh, dear Council, Mayor, and the public, uh, I'm here to give an update on the current state of Madison TV 15. Uh, without going into detail out of respect of, for privacy, I am here to announce that Dennis Craig, station manager of Madison TV 15, is currently hospitalized and listed in a critical condition. Uh, on January 27th, the Public Video Service Board named myself. Uh, Aaron Wood as the acting station manager to keep all day-to-day -day operations running smoothly. Uh, February 3rd, uh, which was last night, the Public Video Service Board uh, met to conduct the duties of the board and made the uh, vote official. Uh, I will fill in uh, the, station manage, uh, the station manager position until uh, such time that Dennis can return. Uh, at this time, uh, we ask the public to have uh, to have patience uh, while we correct re uh, excuse me we correct protocols and update uh, to broadcast the bro update the broadcast system as well as software, hardware, and everything else. Uh, you can actually find all the meetings uh, for Madison T and Madison TV 15 content at MadisonTV15.com. In the meantime, while we make the up proper updates that we need to make. Uh, and you can also find all updates and news and everything on our Facebook page and social media. Uh, please keep Dennis, uh, his friends, and employees in your thoughts uh, during this time. Uh, sincerely, Aaron Wood, uh, Acting Manager of Madison TV 15. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, we're praying for a recovery for uh, Dennis. Anybody else from the public would like to address Council or Mayor? Yes, please, would you come to the podium? and just identify yourself. My name is Andrea Buxton, and I'm from Hanover. And <clears throat> I have a personal concern about the protocol or what constitutes a high-speed chase with the police. <coughs> I don't know if I've come to the right place, but um, I think a lot of people would like to know. <coughs> Um, I think our chief is still here. Our attorney is not here. Uh, I don't know if you've asked a legal question, but I think uh, uh, between our chief of police, he might be able to just describe what he wants to, the standard operating procedure for uh, uh, a chase. Uh, otherwise, we might defer to the council. But Chief McKay? Yeah, pull it up. Okay. Yeah, let's read it. Or, or generally describe perhaps what that is and uh, see if we can address uh, Mr. Buxton's question. Well, I apologize. I was out in the hallway speaking with someone. I didn't hear the question. So. Okay. Well, I just wonder what constitutes a high-speed chase. Well, so basically, if, if you violate... Uh, Chief, you yeah. help the microphone. Thank you. Okay, so I'll just read the general considerations for guidelines for uh, our pursuit. A pursuit. This is a pursuit uh, policy. For our pursuit okay. policy. So, uh, as a general policy, police officers have a responsibility to identify uh, perpetrators of criminal acts and apply whatever means are lawfully responsible, lawful, reasonable, I'm sorry, and appropriate to affect their apprehension and appearance before a court of law. Sorry. Sometimes the means of apprehension may include the pursuit of a suspect in a motor vehicle. The high speed pursuit is undertaken. Officers must realize that the hazards inherent in a vehicular pursuit to officers, suspects, and the public must be balanced against the need for immediate apprehension. The purpose of this pursuit should be to apprehend quickly and safely. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Folks, are there any other questions with regards to uh, the question relative to what is a pursuit or high speed chase? Well, Julie, come to the microphone, please. I just don't know. I, you see so much on television. And last month we had an incident here in our county that cost the lives of two of our young people. And I, you know, what really constitutes chasing somebody at a high rate of speed that ends up in a death if they haven't killed somebody themselves beforehand? I mean, there's got to be a better way. There has to be. I know that things were found out after the, after the fact that they had done wrong, but they, you know, as far as I've understood, it wasn't known beforehand, so... I don't get chasing them to death. I don't get it. Um, let just say that it was a tragic um, Very. accident, an incident that occurred. I believe that our men and women in uniform do the best that they can and make split-second decisions to support and keep our community safe. Sometimes the outcome isn't what everybody would like to desire. The matter is under investigation with the Indiana State Police, so I think we'll find out more facts uh, surrounding the circumstances uh, in the coming weeks. So will those be made known? Yes. So, and I appreciate you being here tonight. Thanks. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. there anyone else who would like to uh, address the City Council or Mayor? I have a few comments. Um, there's one additional appointment that I do need to make, and that is uh, Minnie McGee as our <coughs> official ADA and Title VI coordinator appointment. Uh, that is a role that had been previously held by uh, Bob Cook, and as Bob Cook is transitioning into the clerk treasurer's office, uh, we need to make a, a new appointment for our ADA compliance purposes. Council, give me an update on a few other things that we've been working on. Earlier today, we met with the TIF board and provided to them uh, an outline of the pilot program that you'll be hearing about uh, in the near future. It's to expand our current PACE program, Preservation and Community Enhancement, uh, to have a targeted revitalization focus with it. And we are also working on securing additional funding to um, bring that to fruition. But essentially what it will allow us to do is implement key initiatives with regards to uh, blight elimination, preservation, and neighborhood revitalization. We've identified three targeted areas that we will be using from a pilot per, uh, for the initial pilot program, uh, but we'll, we, we will be doing it inside the PACE program that I think is a, a proven, effective program that council and the TIP board and the administration, as well as the community, has supported uh, and has been responsible for a lot of preservation and restoration of projects all across downtown Madison. If the pilot program is successful, uh, we will be identifying target areas for the hilltop where we think additional capital traction is necessary there. So you'll hear more about this, this program in the coming, coming weeks. Um, we've also been in the process of negotiating uh, renewed contracts for trash removal, trash and recycling. Um, you might be surprised to know that in 2019, we removed about 640 tons of trash uh, from trash pickup in the community. So we are dealing with some cost increases that we're trying to mitigate with our, our uh, Rumpke contract, who is our provider there. We also had renegotiated um, a renewal of our insurance contract, and through some, some changes that we've made there, we were able to essentially eliminate uh, about a 5% proposed increase through just some um, revisiting the, uh, the deductibles and so forth. We have a, over $50 million in insured uh, value of property that's underneath that insurance contract. So uh, we are happy to report that for at least for 2020, there won't be any increases there. We're continuing to you know, focus on, uh, as you heard from the reports of our directors, a lot of things as it relates to public safety, community revitalization, um, economic development, and um, 
focused on the area as a whole, so there'll be a lot more to report, but uh, if you have an opportunity to, to see one of our department heads or any of our city workers, I would just say that they are working very, very hard for the citizens of Madison. I'm grateful for all of their efforts, and they're, they're all doing a really good job, and I'm excited to have an opportunity to lead the city and work with this, uh, this group of people. We have a lot of work uh, still uh, on the horizon for us, and we're, we're happy to give you reports and, and bring you in um, and answer any questions that you might have along the way and keep you informed. And I'm also thankful for your all's participation on the different standing committees and the different boards uh, and appointments. Last thing I'll mention is that we are collaborating, I think, well with uh, Jefferson County. Tomorrow we'll have our first meeting to address issues that have been brought uh, by one of the commissioners re regarding the buffer zone, which is the two mile jurisdictional area that the city of Madison controls from a zoning perspective. So we'll be meeting tomorrow night with a small group, uh, people from our uh, respective planning commissions and zoning boards to talk about those issues and hopefully once and for all uh, work through public issues as well as just uh, issues that the commissioners might have and educate the public, I think, a little bit better on what that juris additional jurisdiction means. And then uh, uh, we're also working on a number of fronts with Jefferson County for an interlocal agreement to participate on economic development, historic preservation, as well as uh, the jail construction. So there's a number of things that we are finding we have uh, common ground on. And we look forward to bringing some of those agreements to you guys in the future and, and again, share, share the collaborative nature with uh, Jefferson County Commissioners and, uh, and the council there. Council, is there any questions you might have for any of us or myself before we adjourn? If not, I will I have a quick comment yes. to make. Okay. Um, I just want to let the public know that the Traffic Committee of the City Council will be holding its first meeting for the year uh, next Thursday, February 13th at 5.30 here in Council Chamber. I know we'll do a public notice of that. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, thank you, Councilman. Anything else, Council? If not, we'll have a motion to adjourn. I appreciate everybody's patience here tonight. Also, uh, grateful for Mr. Barger's AP government class being here again. Uh, hopefully, you're getting extra credit points for being here. But thank you for everybody's participation and patience tonight. Council? I'd like to move to adjourn, please. I'll second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>